Hello, thank you so much for joining us for Cells this week. I'm so glad that you are engaging with this. Um, we're just going to spend right now in a time of worship um, together, worshiping our God for who He is, for what He's doing, for the things He's done, for the things He's doing, and for the things that He will do. So if you would, please engage, please sing with us, clap, shout, yell, dance, whatever you want to do, please engage in worshiping our God with us. Shadows, it's the battle of the rain. Break into the wild and don't be afraid. Run into wide open spaces, braces waiting for you. Dance that the weight has been lifted, braces. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is freedom. Come out of the dark, just as you are, into the fullness of His love. Oh, the Spirit is here.
truck that stands And I hold true to the one who breaks my fall And lifts me time and time again Oh my God, so good You never give up, you never give up on me Oh, what joy I found Because of your love, because of your love for me Oh my God, so good You never give up you never give up on me Oh, what joy I found Because of your love Because of your love for me Guys, thank you so much for who you are. God, thank you for your goodness towards us. Thank you so much that you are a God who loves his children so incredibly much. Thank you so much for the truths that we just sing about. Sing about your freedom. Sing about your love for us, for the goodness that you have for us, for the God that you are. Thank you so much for who you are, Heavenly Father. In your wonderful and holy name, amen. What is up, guys? We are so excited to have you here with us. I'm Pastor Weston. This is our beloved Pastor Paul. Hello. And we're going to be co-teaching tonight as we start our new series called Autopilot. And Paul, we named it Autopilot because the world has went a little crazy right now, correct? A little crazy, just a smidge, yes. Just a smidge. Yeah, there's not a lot of control that we have over most things when we go shopping, you know, seniors graduating, proms, all that stuff. We don't have any control over that anymore. Yeah. So we used to be, I mean, even from when you were young, it was the usual. It was the normal. It was the ordinary, what we all did. We went to our jobs. We went to school. We had free time. We could leave our house. We could do all these things that the last couple months has been just completely flipped upside down. Yep. We have no control. It's almost like we are strapped into a seat in a plane... <laughs> And it's on autopilot. We have no control, but we're along for the ride. Yep. And that is what we've called, and that's why we've named this series Autopilot. And we're going to be looking at four truths of God during this time. The first truth that we're going to be looking for is God is in control. It might not feel like it all the time, but God is truly in control. The next week we're going to be looking at God cares for us. 
Third week, we're going to be looking at God. We are comfortable with your leading. We have to be comfortable with that, with saying, it's not about me being in control. It's not about me taking the driver's seat. God, you're in control. And the last week, we're going to be looking at God's character is constant. It is never changing. Yeah, and, and this whole series is designed so that we will learn how to submit to the mm. sovereignty of God. And, and that's a big churchy word, that word sovereignty, that, that literally means that God's just in control of things without question. Mm -hmm. He can do what he wants, when he wants, how he wants. Uh, but we struggle with that as humans. And so we're going to look at, at a couple of things tonight out of Psalm 139. So if you have your Bibles, we'd encourage you to open them up if you're following along with us on version. Uh, please just open up your version notes and all the sections of Scripture that we'll be covering are there for you. But as we look at submitting to God's control in our lives, we can trust Him. Uh, because of three real attributes of God that are found here in Psalm 139. Verses 1 to 4 talk all about the first attribute of God, and that's omniscience. His omniscience. Omni meaning all, and science meaning knowledge. So omniscience, all-knowing. God is all-knowing. If you look at verses 1 and 2 of Psalm 139, they really highlight that. O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. These two verses show us that God knows everything about us. And it's so important for us to be okay with that. But I know, Weston, you probably know, and you, you know people in your life that act like know-it-alls. Oh, yeah. You know, whatever the yeah. subject matter is, it doesn't matter. They got it. They're the expert at it. They will tell you all they know, right? Oh, yeah. Well, it's interesting to know that Really, according to Psalm 139, God is truly the one and only know-it-all. He, he actually can be okay with that. He is God. And he never learns something new. God never goes, oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing ever surprises him. He's, he never goes, oh, I didn't know that was coming. He knows it all. And because he is all-knowing, we can trust him to be in control. That's good. And that leads us to our second point, which is God is omnipresent, which means God is everywhere all at once. He's not like us. Like right here, this is me. I'm not anywhere else right now. God is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we see that we see that in the Bible that, um, that people try to outrun God. They feel like they can distance themselves from God. You know, there's examples all through the Bible of that. We see that in Jonah where he got on a boat and tried to play hide-and-seek with God, yep. he lost. We see another example of, of King David in the Bible, where he sinned, and he did his best to try to hide it, and he thought he completely covered his sin. He thought he covered his tracks, was just happy as can be. Guess what? God is omnipresent. God knew what he did, and God was there, and he got found out. But it's not just the bad mm -hmm. that, we're, that we see that, where we see God is everywhere. It's, it's the good as well. We see that in the Bible there are three young men who are thrown into a fiery furnace. And God is with them. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They stand on their faith. They stand on the foundation that God is who he says he is. And they do not turn their back. They do not betray God. And the king says, well, guess what? I'm going to show you who's in control. And he throws them in a fiery furnace. Yep. He learned who was truly in control. God. God was with them in the furnace. God is omnipresent. Yeah, and, and that's really the focus if you look at Psalm 139 of verses 7 to 12. Yeah. It's all about that. Where can I go from your spirit? Verse 7. Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If mm. I make my bed in the depths, you are there. That is, it's, it's a little scary in some ways, but it's also super encouraging. Yeah. That God truly, he knows everything. He is everywhere. And verses 13 to mm. 18 of Psalm 139 talk all about God's omnipotence, mm. omni all Potent meaning power. God is all powerful. And I think verse 13 is just an encouraging one for me where David says, For you, he's referencing God there, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's mm. womb. The fact that God was powerful enough to create you and me for purpose, for yeah. his passion, for his glory. And not just us. But Genesis 1-1, mm -hmm. I mean, God created the entire universe 
by speaking it into existence. Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And, and that is so much power. And, and because mm. God is all powerful, because he is all present, and because he is all knowing, we can trust him to be in control of our lives. Yes. Uh, Pastor Weston, have you, can you kind of think of a time when you had to submit control of a situation over to God and just trust him? To, yeah. to do what was right? Absolutely. Um, this is like the story for me when thinking about this, of thinking of God is in control, and I have zero control. Um, years ago, my wife and I were uh, pregnant with our firstborn, Cadence Brienne, and my wife was in labor, and it had not been a very easy journey during that time of labor. It took several hours, and just there was complications. And so what happened was the nurse came in, and she said, what we're going to do is we're going to give your wife some medication to help, help the labor along. Mm. Well, what this did is it kind of caused some problems with my wife. It had some unforeseen consequences. Um, she started getting groggy. She started getting sleepy and doing just a lot of this, was in and out. I was trying to talk to her. The nurse was trying to talk to her, and she was just, the medicine was messing with her. So I'm standing by her bedside. The nurse is over in the corner looking at the computers, looking at the screen. And she says, excuse me one second. I'll be right back. And I'm sitting there hanging out with my wife, just like, I'm, I'm not moving. You know, I'm, I'm here. And she comes back with several doctors and several other nurses. And they start looking at the computers, looking at the screens, figuring things out. And they're, they're just kind of a, they were hectic. You know, they were moving quick and they were talking fast. And I didn't know what was going on. And finally, a doctor pulled me aside and said, here's what's happening. Your wife is not reacting well to the medicine we gave her. And so the baby's heart rate is dropping dramatically. Mm -hmm. And if we don't do something immediately, we will lose the baby and possibly your wife. So I'm just told this. My head is spinning. And I, I remember looking down at my wife and saying, babe, we're, we're going to take the baby. The baby's in trouble. We're gonna, they're going to go take care of you mm -hmm. and they're going to get the baby out. And she, I just remember her kind of nodding, but not really being all present sure. because of the medication. So while the doctor's telling me this, they are getting the bed ready that she's in. They whisk her away down the hall. And almost as an afterthought, they turn to me and say, we'll come get you when you can be in the room. And so I am left in an empty room with the thought that that might be the last time I see my bride. I might never get to meet my beautiful cadence, and I have never felt so helpless, Paul. Mm. I'm, I'm telling you what. Um, I just remember pacing back and forth. I'm not even sure how long. I know it was probably 20 minutes or more, but it felt like an eternity, just pacing back and forth, just praying, God, please protect my family. Please be with my wife. Please mm. be with my child. Please protect my family. God, I am not in control. I have zero control of the situation. And it's so funny how up until that point, I felt like, well, I'm the dad, I'm the husband. I can control stuff. I can, I can help do what I need to. But in that moment, I had zero control. And I had to rely on God. And I had to just say, Lord, it's in your hands. I've, I have zero control. And he showed us mercy. And we have our beautiful Cadence Brand, who is now four and my wife, and he was so, he showed us so much favor mm -hmm. during that time. But, and I want to use the word but, mm -hmm. even had things gone differently, God still would have been in control, and he still would have been good. Yeah, um, I mean, you and yeah. I have a friend that, yeah. that we know from this area here in Tulsa, yeah. who, who has a, a similar story, but a completely opposite outcome, that yeah. he lost his little baby boy and his wife yeah. within days of each other. And, and even now, years later, he'll, he'll still say that God is good yeah. and God is in control, but it was a much more painful yes. experience for him. And, and that's why when, when we say in this series that we are going to learn to mm -hmm. submit to the sovereignty of God. It's, it's not something that comes naturally. Because yeah. like you said, we want to own it. We want to yes. take it. We want to be the masters of our own destiny. Yes, we do. And, and we can't be 
when God's, if we're going to say God's in control. Absolutely. And, and we really do. We, we want to dig into this idea deeper with you. Mm -hmm. uh, and we want to encourage you to join us on our YouVersion Bible plan for the next three days. We're going to start tomorrow. Uh, but for the next three days, we're going to look at the Bible plan always in control. And it really does look at how we view the sovereignty of God. How do we view God being in control? Mm. So there'll be a text that goes out later tonight that has the details. You can also join right, a lot, right on along with us in your version notes. Well, immediately following this time together, we're going to be breaking up into our small groups, which we call cells. Yep. Both middle school and high school will be there, and we're going to break up into a bunch of different breakout rooms. Uh, but we would love to have you join that. We'll be sending you some links for that here in the next few moments. But man, I'd love to close this in prayer, yeah. and, uh, and then we'll see what's coming up next week. Absolutely. All right, Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much that you are a God who is all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-present. And even though we don't totally understand all that and how all that rolls, we believe it by faith. And so, Father God, we trust you to be in control. And Father, as we journey through this series together, may we learn truly learn to submit to your mm -hmm. sovereignty, to, to submit to you being in control of all areas of our lives. So Father God, thank you for this evening. Thank you for this time together. May you bless our small groups here in a moment. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well guys, thank you again so much for joining us mm -hmm. tonight. Next week, we're going to talk about how God cares. Yeah. Even though he's in control, he still cares for us. Yep. So we hope that you are back here next week, 7 p.m., as we continue this series, Autopilot. Thanks it. again, Pastor Weston, so much Thank for you, sharing Pastor the story. Paul. We hope to see you next week, guys. See you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>